bid you a good morning or a good afternoon or a good evening depending on the time that you are listening in on this YouTube video worship presentation for the Hastings and Roseneath Pastoral Church of the United Church of Canada. I'm Reverend Jamie York and it is indeed a humble honor for me to come before you in words this day to offer this worship time praying that it will be richly blessing to each and every one of you who are listening in. This week is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the final Sunday of the season of Easter. Ascension Day was on Thursday, and so next week will be the first uh, Sunday in the season of Pentecost, or Pentecost Sunday will be next week. I invite you into this time. Prepare your hearts and minds for worship. I invite you into our choral introit, which you can sing along to, or just listen to. Our call to worship. And then our opening hymn, We Are One, from Voices United, number 402. is here with us today. Christ's presence can be such a mystery. God's kingdom depends on peace and justice and it is rooted in that mystery. As our lives are now, when those times are that they are tested in so many ways, God encourages us to be glad and filled with joy. So come. Come worship, search the scriptures, receive God's word, sing and pray, worship our God.
Will you join with me in prayer? Let us pray. Most High God, we gather to honor and glorify you this day. Receive our invitation to dwell with us. Enfold each of us in your presence and fill us again with that sense of holy awe and holy mystery. We are yours and we claim you as our God. May your spirit surround us in our worship time this day. Amen. John 17 verses 1. Scripture reading for today is from John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave to me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. In this reading is good news for God's people. May the Spirit of the living God be with us today. Amen. Said and heard, in the Spirit of you, our living God. Amen. So once there was a village that had a, a chief of the village, and he had three sons, each of them which possessed a special talent. The oldest was skilled in his ability to raise and care all of, for olive trees. The second son was a shepherd, skilled in looking after sheep and in making sick sheep well. The third son was a great dancer. When there was needed cheer in lives of the people, he would dance and bring joy to them. One day the father told his sons that he had to go on a long journey. So he instructed them, he said, My sons, the people of the village will be depending on you to help them. Each of you has a special talent, so while I'm gone, I expect you to use your gift wisely and well, so that upon my return I will find our village more happy and prosperous than it is today. He embraced his sons and then left on his journey. For a few months, things went quite well in the village, but then came the cold winter with its snow and its winds and assorted problems. First, the buds on the olive trees shrank and cracked, and it would therefore be a long time before the trees would recover. <clears throat> The village people ran out of firewood, so the people began to cut down the trees and in the process, stripped the village bare. Even though the first son 
did not want to see the trees cut down. He knew that the villagers needed heat to survive and so he began to help them make firewood from the olive trees. Then the snow and the ice made it impossible for traders to come up the river to engage in commercial activities. So the villagers said, let us kill the sheep and eat them so we will not starve to death. The village chief's second son refused for a time, but eventually gave in to the villagers' demands. He said, what good will it do to spare the sheep only to have the villagers perish? So the villagers had enough food for their fires and had enough wood for their fires and, and food for their tables, but the horrible winter had broken the people's spirit. They began to lose hope. This belief was so strong that family by family they began to desert the village in search of a more hospitable environment. Eventually the icy grip of winter began to loosen. Spring arrived and at the same time the chief of the village returned to find smoke rising only from his own chimney. What have you done? he asked when he reached his village. What has happened to the villagers? The eldest son says, Oh father, forgive me. The people were freezing and, I, and they begged me to cut down the olive trees and so I did. I gave away my talent. I'm, I'm no longer fit to be an orchard keeper. The second son said, Don't be angry, father. The sheep would have frozen anyway and the people were starving and thus... I sent the herd to slaughter to feed my people. The father understood and said, Don't be ashamed, my sons. You did the best you could and acted rightly and humanely. You used your talents wisely in trying to save the people. But tell me, what has become of them? Where are they? The two brothers fixed their eyes on the younger brother who said, Welcome home, Father. Yes, it has been a hard winter. There was little eat to eat and little firewood for heat. I thought it would be insensitive and, and improper to dance during such suffering. Besides, I needed to conserve my strength so that I could dance for you when you came home. Then dance, my son, said the Father, for the village is empty and so too is my heart. Fill us with joy and courage once again. Yes, please dance. But when the third son made ready to dance, he grimaced and fell down to the ground. His legs were so stiff and sore from sitting that they could no, no longer be used for dancing. The father was so sad that he could not even be angry. He simply said to the youngest son, Ours was a strong village that could have survived the want for fuel and food, but it could never survive without hope. And because you failed to use your talent wisely and well, our people gave up what little hope they had. So now what? The village is deserted, and you are crippled. I guess your punishment has already befallen upon you. With that, he embraced his two elder sons and wept. It's a powerful little story that demonstrates what happens when we fail to use wisely the gifts and the talents that God gives us. Or should I say, God encourages in us. For four chapters of John's Gospel, we have been given Jesus' farewell discourse. And in today's reading, Jesus offers this prayer to his Father and reviews, one might say, the mission he engaged at his Father's request. He prays to God and expresses how he has done his best to complete the work he was sent to accomplish. Jesus acknowledges that the Father gave him authority over all people in order to bring them the message of salvation by knowing the only true God. 
He says, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Jesus prays to the Father to protect his followers so that they would be one with Jesus as Jesus is one with the Father. We all know that Jesus' prayer was answered when the Advocate comes, the coming of the Holy Spirit at the great feast of Pentecost. There is no doubt that Jesus did his work very well. The Son of God possessed many great talents to conduct his ministry. He was the greatest of teachers, as seen so often in the scriptures. Every work and action of Jesus was an opportunity to teach, and he never once shied away from this call. We recall how Jesus taught them that it is better to serve than be served, that humility was far more important than power, and that there was an absolute need to sacrifice, even to die to self and live for others in order to find life eternal. Jesus taught publicly through the veiled messages of the parables and through his sermons. He used his ability to effect miraculous cures of mind, spirit, body, to show God's love for the people. He never missed an opportunity to assist another, especially those who demonstrated faith. We, the contemporary disciples of Jesus, have been given many talents and gifts to be used in God's kingdom. We are here individually and uniquely to wisely and fully use the many and wonderful gifts we have been given. The gifts of teaching and speaking and writing. Words and ideas are very important and possess great power. Some of us have great athletic ability, while others are great musicians and singers and artists. Some of us are very good with numbers and can use our skill as engineers and scientists and researchers. There are a few who possess multiple talents and how wonderfully gifted they are. And there are many who possess gifts of loving and caring and compassion, keeping things in order administratively. The acknowledgement of our gifts could likely go on for a few pages. And if we were to review our lives as Jesus does in this prayer, would we be able to honestly say that we have used God's gifts wisely and well for the benefit of all? Or have we been more like the younger son who squandered his gift of bringing hope and in the process lost his talent and devastated his village and his father? It is not always easy to use our gifts well, wisely, and for the betterment of all. And thus, we often need the assistance of others. This we have in the community of faith. We can rely on the Christian community to assist, to lead, and if necessary, challenge us to use our gifts well and wisely. I don't know about you, but I have of late seen some wonderful use of the gifts and talents of many people during this pandemic time. Many people pulling together to help in many situations. Donations of food or other resources to help others during this time. Words of inspiration written on sidewalks with chalk or painted on signs or painted on little rocks in bright colors. Words of support and gratitude sung or 
played on a musical instrument, even if that instrument is a pot and a wooden spoon. Many, many people carrying on Jesus' desire for people to live into the mission of his ministry just as he had prayed to his Father that all may be one. Humanity has a history of pulling together as one rather than pulling apart when crisis hits. And we wonder and we pray to our God for support, for care, for direction into the future. I think it does the heart of Jesus good to know that his prayer his to his Father, what I call Jesus' greatest prayer, continues to be followed and to be understood and to be heard to this very day. To Jesus the Christ who knew us and loved us before we were, who loves us now and will love us forever, thanks be to God. Amen and Amen. Let us join together in the hymn, I Have Called You By Your Name. It is from More Voices, number 161. I have called you by your name. It is with a uh, deep sense of gratitude and thanksgiving that I thank those who have been offering uh, donations to our two churches in order to help in the ongoing expenses involved in ministry. We are uh, extremely grateful and thankful for those who have supported the church and I encourage you to support our uh, ministry work within Hastings and Roseneath and there are various ways of doing that either through mail-in donations or online donations and details are on the church's website which is H A R P C H A R G E dot com harpcharge dot com. Our minute for mission for this week is entitled Searching for Peace in the Korean Peninsula. And I've put a copy of that into the uh, video for this week, and so if you would like to read that, you can pause the video and uh, go through there. Gracious God, we come before you at this time and lift before you our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of love and concern. And we hold before you this week our knowledge of this being Ascension Week special time when we recognize the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the heavens and we know you God is a that rider of that ancient heavens we find ourselves so many times looking up <laughs> looking to the heavens though we know God that you're right beside us you're amongst us we look always to the old stories that our ancestors shared in but then we also look forward and find new meaning for our lives. May we always remember our roots while still looking forward and sometimes looking up in awe and wonder at the great works of your creation. May we always seek the skies as our ancestors sought the gods and learned about you that one God, knowing that you are an amazing God. Gracious God, as we come before you in prayers this day, we, we have many prayers to lay before you. We have our prayers for all who are suffering in some way with the coronavirus. May their love and care and 
your care for them be a blessing to them and that they might know that it is through your healing touch that they can be made whole. We pray also for our hospital workers and their doctors and nurses and different staff people, for frontline workers, the paramedics and the pharmacists and the fire and police officers and, and those who are serving in the funeral service. We pray, pray for our, our store owners and, and their employees, the restaurant workers. and We pray for the many who are working in various areas of service to many people. We also hold up our, our transport people, our truck drivers who keep all the necessities that we have in life moving down the road. I pray, gracious God, for those who are known to us, those who are ill of mind, body, or spirit, those who may be in care facility, that your healing touch will surround them and care for them in so many ways. So we offer these, these are prayers this day, God. We offer them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who taught us these words to say as we offer them in song. United, number 427.
continue to be faithful, remaining committed to being witnesses for Christ. For the God of all grace has called each of us to eternal glory through Jesus Christ, and will fulfill, restore, strengthen, and establish each of you through suffering and struggle, through joy and compassion. So be empowered by Christ's love, keeping Christ's name on your lips and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in your mind. And may God's love be in your hearts. May God's beloved ones be always in your sight. And may God's still speaking voice be always in your ear, now and forever.